Coming up on Hands On Mac, today we are taking a look at focus modes on macOS. Stay tuned. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Welcome back to Hands on Mac. My name is Micah Sargent, and today we are taking a look at a feature on macOS that is actually available across uh, Apple's various platforms. You've got iOS, iPadOS, macOS, even the Apple Watch with watchOS uh, all offer a version of focus modes. Focus modes help you to make decisions uh, for your notifications and your apps based on particular activities. So let's take a look. All right, here we are on macOS. And the first thing we're going to do is open up the system settings menu. Uh, from here, we will choose focus in the menu on the left side of the screen. And you will notice that by default, you will probably have a do not disturb focus. Uh, that is kind of the default focus that you can activate very easily. And in most cases, it turns off a lot of the notifications for your device. You also have two options below the do not disturb focus mode, including share across devices and focus status. Share across devices is a feature that says on all of the devices in which I am logged in, please make it so that the focus mode is the same. So on my iPhone, on my iPad, on my Mac, if I turn on do not disturb, I want all of those devices to have do not disturb turned on. Of course, on each of these devices, you'll have that same toggle. So if, for example, you want your iPhone and your Mac to match focus modes, but you want your iPad to have its own set of focus modes, turn off the toggle on the iPad and it will not sync with the iPhone and the Mac. The focus status gives you the ability to share what focus mode you have turned on. So when you are uh, when someone rather is sending you a message, then they will see if they have a an updated version of iOS, iPadOS, macOS, etc., they will see that you have a focus mode turned on so they can see that, you know, you have do not disturb, you are silencing your notifications in some way. Now, let's start by taking a look at the built in do not disturb focus mode, and then we'll look at creating a focus mode with do not disturb. We can access it by clicking on it. We are presented with a series of options. First is allow notifications. Second is set a schedule. And lastly is focus filters under allow notifications. You have some options. You can choose which people and which apps are allowed to notify you while this focus mode is turned on. If we choose allowed people, we are given a little pop up that has there, there are different ways to kind of set this up. So you can choose to allow specific people. So maybe it's a family member, it's your partner, it's whomever, uh, and you know, your children, whatever it happens to be, you can say these are the people who can get through. You also have the option to disallow some people or what's called silence some people. So instead of telling the system, these are the people I want to have communicate with me in this mode. You can say, these are the people I don't want to have communicate with me in this mode. So maybe you've got a filter for that annoying family member or family members or a group chat or something. You could choose to silence those people. Now, uh, once you make a choice there, you're given the option to add those people. Uh, clicking the plus button will show you your contacts list, and then you can choose which people are allowed. You simply select them and choose OK. You're also presented with the allow calls from option. And what this does is it says that if this focus mode is on, then these people can still call you. There are multiple options here. Everybody can still call you. Allowed people can call you. So the people who you've chosen uh, favorites can still call you contacts of any sort can call you or if you have specific contacts groups or contact lists then you can select from those contact lists and then there's an option that says that if even if you have all of let's say you don't allow calls from anyone right um so I would choose allow calls from allowed people only. And since I don't have anybody in the allowed people, that means nobody's able to call me during do not disturb. But allow repeated calls says that if a person calls you and then they place a call again within three minutes, their call is able to get through. 
So allow repeated calls toggled on means that if it seems like it's an emergency because they've called you twice, then they're able to get in touch. Uh, the next section is allowed apps. Now, these are once again, uh, like people, these are the apps that you're allowing to communicate with you. You can choose to allow specific apps or silence specific apps. So this is great if you create a work focus. Maybe there are some apps during work that you want to have actually message you some apps during work that you don't want to see the notif notifications for like Instagram or something like that. And then you can choose to toggle on time sensitive notifications, certain apps can be granted permission. Uh, it's something that happens on the developer side to have what are called time sensitive notifications turned on. A lot of times these are delivery apps. Uh, occasionally these are emergency apps. They will have time sensitive notifications. And so these have special permissions that say, look, this needs to be told to this person now. So if you choose to turn on time sensitive notifications, those time sensitive notifications will be able to come through. And again, you can choose to allow some apps or disallow some apps. The next section is the schedule. Now in the schedule, you have different options. You can choose time, location, or while you're using a certain app. So by default, there is a schedule that is provided and it's a time schedule. And so this can be an everyday schedule. You toggle it on, you choose what time. So maybe uh, from 10 p.m. to uh, 5 a.m. every single day, you want Do Not Disturb to turn on. That means that that's what's going to happen. But you can also create other schedules. So I can choose Add Schedule. Perhaps you have a work, uh, work focus. You can say, when I arrive at this location, please turn off or on my focus mode, rather. And then also, if you have, say, when you're reading uh, from the Books app, you don't want to be disturbed automatically you can have that happen that when the books app launches you will not be disturbed and are able to uh you know have that turn on automatically the last thing is focus filters and focus filters are unique because this is a feature that was added later after focus modes were added that again happens on the developer side developers are able to put little um extensions so to speak into their apps that give special that make special changes to those apps so for example if you have a calendar app like fantastical uh, which is a calendar that i use fantastical supports focus filters and one of the things with fantastical is you can create different calendar sets i have my main calendar set that has the stuff that i need to pay attention to all the time i have my twit calendar set that has everything to do with twit so some of the calendars that i have turned off in main do appear in the twit set and you can say that when this focus mode turns on i want that calendar set to switch so it's important that you choose add filter and see which apps support it because it's going to depend on whether the developer has added this functionality uh, we will take a look at focus filters whenever we create a new filter so that's the basic do not disturb focus mode but let's create a new one we go back to the main focus screen and we choose add focus from here we can choose one that's kind of suggested like personal reading work mindfulness gaming or create a custom focus mode i'm going to choose the work focus mode and the first thing i will do is go into the people section and in this case i want to allow certain people i'm going to allow me for example and I am going to allow calls only from actually, no, I'll choose work list. So all of the people that are part of that contact list called work list are able to send me a message. And I will turn on allow repeated calls because if somebody were calling me and they called me right back, there's clearly something going on and it is OK to take that call uh, if I was at work. I can also choose which apps. So if you uh, and in this case, I think I'm going to choose silence some apps and I will choose add. And in this case, the apps that I want to silence are FaceTime. I will add that if someone's trying to FaceTime me while I'm at work, they shouldn't be FaceTiming me in the first place, but especially while I'm not at work. And then, of course, if you have a bunch of third party apps, this is where I would add those two. But just for uh, for understanding. I'm going to also add tips and I'm going to keep time sensitive notifications turned off. I'll choose done. 
Next is the schedule. Now with the schedule, normally I'd choose location, but if I choose location, it is going to pop up my location. So in that case, I'm not going to do that. So instead, I'm going to uh, do what is like a normal work schedule, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday and say that during those times, that is when the work schedule is turned on. Now, you'll notice that it is currently Wednesday and it is not yet 5 p.m. So that means that this work schedule has automatically been triggered and has turned on. Lastly is focus filters. So I'll choose a filter and you can see these are some of the apps that support it. So I mentioned Fantastical. I mentioned, um, well, that's the one I mentioned was Fantastical that has the ability to switch between calendar sets. So in this case, I would choose this and I would say if I had those custom calendar sets, which I don't on this uh, account, those would pop up. So I'd be able to do that. But let's go with um, the messages app. And what I can say is that, see, I, I just want conversations with uh, certain people. And so I could choose that and choose add. Now, only uh, the people uh, with whom I'm hoping to speak to would appear when I open the messages app. Uh, I can also set a filter for Safari. And in this case, I would choose um, a specific profile. And you'll notice that we have that work profile as an option. We've talked about Safari profiles in a previous episode. So now when I launch Safari, it is automatically switched to my work profile by default. Uh, again, you can set this up by location as you want to. And so that is uh, how you create focus filters. I really recommend that you hop in there, take a look at the different apps that are available. You may be surprised what some of the apps that you have, especially from third party developers, are able to do based on a focus mode. And then uh, at any time you can edit a schedule by simply clicking on it. You can choose to delete the schedule or make adjustments to it. You can change which apps are silenced or allowed, which people are silenced or allowed. And if at any time you get tired of a, of a focus mode, you don't want it anymore. You simply just choose delete focus and that will allow you to remove that focus mode. But for now, that work focus mode is turned on. It is shared across the different devices that are logged in with the Micah Twit Apple ID. And I have it set so that my focus status is shared. So if someone were to try to message me, they would see that I'm currently in a focus mode. Folks, that is a rundown of how to not only uh, go through the focus modes on your Mac, but also how to set them up, how to remove them, how to make adjustments. And basically, it's just uh, an all encompassing look at focus on Mac OS. Thanks so much for tuning into this week's episode of Hands on Mac. As always, if you have questions, comments, if you have uh, suggestions, send those my way, Micah at twit.tv. I appreciate you for tuning in into this week's episode, and I will catch you again next week for another episode of Hands on Mac. Goodbye.